Uh, we're just gonna put. I'm just gonna put coal in there for the moment. And look at that. Oh wow, they they changed the way this sounds. This is cool, man. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, we are going to build ourselves a road out to the coast. That's the main plan. Uh, but, as you can see here, our factory is running at 100% efficiency. So if you didn't know this, if your orange consumption line is perfectly straight like that, that means all of your machines are running at 100% efficiency. So it's a beautiful thing. Uh, I did. There were a few things I had to do, though, to get that to work. I had to tweak some stuff, and I will go over what... Uh, those tweaks were uh, let's go ahead and go into fly mode here and we'll just take a quick tour of all the changes that I had to, to do uh, so first of all all of our storage I believe is completely full I did let the game uh, well except for our smart plates I did let the game run overnight uh, just to to get everything filled up and um, we have a total of 46 coupons plus Doug continues to bring us really good stuff. So we, we currently have 36 uh, turbo motors, uh, two pulse noblis. He also brought me a nuke noblis of all things and um, some other basic stuff. So, yeah, Doug's just rocking it. Last time I saw Doug, by the way, he was over here in the water. Uh, Doug doesn't need oxygen, by the way, just so you know. He apparently can stay submerged indefinitely and be just fine. So that's good. Um, I'm not sure where he is at the moment, actually. Oh, there he is. Let's go talk to Doug real quick. Oh, nice. Nine more computers. Thanks, buddy. You're just amazing. Okay. Is he going to come over here? Yeah. I, I've noticed the critters in 1.0 seem to get stuck real easily, especially Mr. Bean. I don't know what the hell's up with that. Hopefully they'll do something about that. But anyway, um, so, okay, so he just brought us some more computers. That gives us a total of 18. How many do we need? We need computers for uh, some more research here. We need 17 for manual depot uploader. The question I have about this, though, is if you can upload manually... Then, do you need a separate depot for each item you manually upload? I'm not sure how that works, actually. That requires 50 computers. Um, that require well, that one doesn't require computers at all. I've got a lot of the flux uh, sand fluctuators. I, I, I made a whole bunch of them, as you can see there. I had to handcraft those. Let's go ahead and research that because we can alien energy harnessing so what ada has to say potential for harnessing alien energy completed fix it has identified two development tracks requiring additional research to integrate summer sloops safely and efficiently into fix it technology the loop organ contains scripture contains instruments to compose symphonies of root and rot and recycling shrines to evolution and revolution I see. It seems we truly are building understanding. We are? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they just said, but whatever. Okay, anyway, um, so we wouldn't, we'll need 50 computers for the power augmenter. And do I have, I don't think I have 50 circuit boards. What do I have for circuit boards? I have 34. Okay, so those are all from Doug, of course. Uh, so maybe eventually we'll get enough circuit boards to do that, too. What I want to do, though, is I want to... Let's go ahead and research this. Oh, we can't. We need three Mercer spheres. Okay, well, never mind. We have all the computers that we need for that, but we're going to have to get Mercer spheres, uh, which is coming up soon. Uh, all right, good. So, let's... Uh, yeah, let's go take a quick tour of some things I had to fix. Uh, so, the first thing is, let's run over quickly to the... 
Caterium Smelter Shack. All right, so when I had originally set this up, I I wasn't thinking about our belt limitation, which is a little unusual because normally I am thinking about that. I am taking that into account. And I had this guy set to do 300 and some odd. I can't remember exactly how much it was. Uh, or for, you know, the maximum plan that we had put together. And obviously the belt and the lift can only handle 270. So that was causing this miner to stall out. And when that happens, you know, then of course the power, um, you know, you, you, you're, you'll see like a little blip in your orange line there on the power, right? So what I had to do is I had to reduce this to 270 because that's the maximum we can handle with Mark III and then adjust the smelters uh, to, uh, you know, to work with that amount. So 45 times 6 is 270, so that, that's why this number here is 45. So that gives us a few less Kateria Mingus, but that's actually not a problem because we were massively overproducing quick wire and copper wire. And so, you know, by reducing that, we didn't really hurt ourselves at all. Uh, I told you guys this in the last episode, but I didn't actually show you. But I do have um, our 300 megawatt uh, coal plant uh, up and running again to add, you know, more power to our grid because I upgraded this to a Mark II, which gives us 60 coal per minute, which is what that requires. And then our temporary steel beam and pipe production can run or is set rather to run off of the 60 coal coming from here. So this guy is consuming 15 coal and iron per minute, and this one's consuming 45 to make the beams. All right, let's uh, run back on over to the factory then, and I'll show you a few more adjustments I had to, to make to get this nice, smooth orange line on our power. I showed you in the last episode um, that we changed this to a smart splitter because what was happening is... Um, you know, this was a dumb splitter and it was doing an even 50-50 split and these machines weren't getting enough iron. So we fixed that and that's working good. And then the overflow, which is 30 ingots in total um, from the 270 that we're bringing in is just overflowing and going down into storage. Well, actually, it's going into the sink because we have a full storage. Now, I did have to change something here. This was originally, this lift was originally going into a merger and merging with these ingots that were coming here. This line is maxed out. It's at 270, and that's because these rods and these screws all require a total of 270 ingots, right? So what was happening, though, is whenever you merge a couple of belts together, they, they have to take turns once they get into the merger. So what was happening is as these ingots were coming through, it was causing a momentary pause on this belt. And because that belt was maxed out at 270, what was happening is that it started to back up all the way back to the smelters on the other side of that mountain and causing, a, uh, eventually just, you know, causing extra buildup in the smelters. And then they were shutting down momentarily and causing, you know, blips in our orange line. So hopefully that makes sense. So what I did was I separated these two lines, right? So I ran this 270 line down its own conveyor line into a smart splitter and told the smart splitter to send everything out the right but any overflow that you might have, which theoretically there shouldn't be any, but there actually is, and I'll explain why, um, out to the left side. And that solved that problem and, you know, gave us a nice smooth orange line, okay? Now, what I also did was I ended up shutting down uh, or pausing, I should say, uh, these two screw machines because we were massively overproducing screws. And what that was doing is that was overwhelming this feed here into the awesome sink, more specifically this Mark III belt here, which has to handle all three of these inputs. And that was then backing up and causing... Uh, some of those screw machines to stall out, which was messing with our orange line again, you know, making blips in our orange line. So because we have screws coming out our ears, uh, I just shut these two machines off for now. We can turn them back on later if we, you know, if we need them for something. Uh, so right now they're just idle. 
uh, and that is by design. Now, because these two machines are turned off, that means this whole setup here is not using the full 270, and therefore some of these ingots, as you can see, one just went down there, are also going out the overflow into storage. Okay, um, so the other change that I had to make is I, same thing here, uh, same scenarios we had down here, right, with the plates. I put a smart splitter here for the Katerium production and a smart splitter here for the copper sheeting production because those were originally dumb splitters. And again, it was splitting 50-50 and starving both of these chains, causing some shutdowns and some blips in our line. So both smart splitters send everything out the right. Only will if there's overflow will it send it out the center. And in doing that, we fix that issue. There was one more thing I had to do up here. This um, bolted frame machine was not getting enough plates because, again, we had just a dumb splitter here. So I changed this to a smart splitter. I told it to send reinforced plates out the right and only send overflow out the center. And as soon as I did that, this now has enough plates and it's running 100% efficiently. So those were the changes that I made to the factory in order to get that nice, smooth orange line. Now, in the future, when we get Mark IV belts and, you know, later on the even the faster belts, if we need to, I can, uh, you know, uh, upgrade the belts and then increase um, some of that stuff in order to, you know, get more while still staying 100% efficient. I forgot to tell you that I also shut off this one Katerium wire machine because, again, we were just sending 240 wire down the line and overwhelming the Mark III belt along with everything else. We have more wire than we know what to do with, so I shut this machine down for now, but we have the ability to turn it back on later once we can upgrade our belts and if we need to do so. So those were the adjustments we made to the factory to make it run 100% efficient, and now it is running smooth as a baby's butt. It's awesome. Okay, over here, a couple changes we did. Um, I, re I, I cleaned out all of the storage that was here. I threw a lot of it into the sink. All of the extra reanimated SAMs I turned into those flu uh, those fluctuators that I showed you over there and uh, cleared off this pad. I also uh, set up this sushi line here uh, to run down through underneath our walkway here over and around to here. The uh, reanimated goes up into this bin, which is already full. Because remember, I said I, 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 I let this run overnight, so that's already once again full. And then everything else is just going through this smart splitter, which is sending the overflow out here and running it in through this line and then coming out here and going into here. So we have, um, we have our three ingot storage, which we had put in place. We have a full steel beams. We have a full steel pipes. These two are not yet assigned. Well, they are assigned, but they're going to hold uh, quartz crystal and silica when we get that set up. Uh, this bin here is just uh, our extra bin that we can th manually throw stuff into the sink as needed. So everything over here except for the smart plates is completely full. So it's all just feeding all the way through coming around and going into the sink and earning us coupons. All right. Now, before we get started with our road building, I did make myself a very basic, simple um, bio, uh, solid biofuel blueprint. So let's put that in place so we can have that ready to go. We are going to need biofuel and biomass in the future for research and for, you know, for fuel and for making liquid biofuel when the time comes. Uh, so that's why we're setting this up, even though we're not using it, you know, for main power now. I'm going to go to constructors. I'm going to choose this biomass factory blueprint that I created. And we're going to set it in place right about somewhere here. Let's freeze that. And have it um let's see where are we at here can we move it further back this way yes we can so that way the front of it is flush with our walkway which it pretty much is we could even maybe move it back one more we have plenty of room back here 
Okay, and then... Let's see, where are we at with all of this? Why don't we move it one more that direction, too? I think that's pretty good. Let's lock it in place. Okay, this is very basic. So, this uh, storage container will take wood. So, it's set up for wood biomass. And I, when, when we get signs going, I'll put a sign on that. This one's set up for leaves. Right? So, we just go out, we pick a bunch of wood, we pick a bunch of leaves, we put it in there, and we're good to go. This one will create biomass from wood. This one will create biomass from leaves. The one from wood, which outputs 300 biomass per minute goes over to this constructor which is overclocked to accept 300 biomass per minute so it's 100% efficient and then it'll create solid biofuel and store that in here for us to use later on. The leaf setup is set to take uh, and create biomass and just store the biomass as biomass in this bin and that's a, once again because we need biomass not solid biomass but just biomass itself for some research and some things later on that we're going to have to do so that's why we're also going to store regular biomass and that's it it's very simple easy peasy lemon squeezy so all we need to do is hook some power up to this i think what we'll do is uh run a line here Let's come over here, grab a pole, and we'll line up right on this pole here, and then make sure we're facing to the south, and put that uh, right here. And then run a line down there, and we are powered up and ready to go. Okay, cool. So, you know, um, and the, the other reason why I want it kind of over here as opposed to over there is because this is where all the biomass is actually located. And we can just go through and pick it and throw it in there as we, you know, as we go along. I'm not planning on using the chainsaw at all uh, for this stuff. So everything we put in there is just going to be hand-picked um, as, you know, as I periodically go along and decide to do that. I will, of course, you know, primarily do that off camera. Um, even though I'm doing a little bit of it right now. But uh, the other thing, too, is I don't really want to pick the foliage close to our builds because then it won't respawn. So that's why I want to kind of go around the corner and go around and pick this stuff. And that way everything stays, you know, nice and lush over over here. This is supposed to be Doug's, Doug's living area here, but... Doug kind of likes to go where he likes to go, and that's fine. You know, I'm not I'm not going to restrict Doug from doing what Doug wants to do. Um, so you guys should be making biomass. So you, you actually, well, did you have enough wood to bring a little bit over here? Huzzah, look at that. We have 20. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, yeah, so like I said, I'll do all that stuff off camera. That's not something I'm going to do on camera. But it's all set up and ready to go. Not sure what we'll do with this area over here, but it is available to us for whatever we decide to do with it in the future. Guys, let's build a road. It is time for some road building. Doug, do you have anything more for us, buddy? Nice, look at that. All right, love you, dude. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with the road build here. Um, I, I spent quite a bit of time off camera doing some surveying. Um, and so I think I figured out how I'm gonna do this. There, uh, you know, the terrain presented several challenges. For one thing, I want the the road and the platform that we're going to set up over here. We are going to set a platform up over here uh, in this area to be at the same level as the ground floor of our pyramid here. And as you can see, um, you know, some of these dunes rise up pretty quickly surrounding it. Um, but I, I worked in that out that part of it out. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't want the road itself or that platform to be any higher than the ground uh, floor because then it would start to obstruct the view of the pyramid. So that was the reason for that. And then I had a lot of challenges trying to figure out the most direct route to the east out to the coast. Uh, again, because of terrain challenges, you know, high sand dunes, rock outcroppings. Um, or resources 
resource nodes that I didn't want the road to cover and block, you know, so that we couldn't use them in the future. Uh, but I think I finally have this figured out. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this and we're going to put a foundation here and a foundation here. Um, and yeah, and let's put two more foundations here as well, just to start with. And this is going to be the inside corner of, of the road that's going to be running north south. Uh, right. Okay. So now what we're going to do is, uh, on my toolbar here, I have, oh, actually, no, I need to, to change the toolbar. Let's go to blueprints and we'll go to roads and rails. And in the number two slot, we want to put road section flat. That is the, uh, our main road section. On the number three toolbar, we want to put the incline because we'll be using that quite a bit. In the number four section, we're going to want to put the corner. The five can be the T. The six can be the uh, road with support. And the seven can be just the road support by itself. And I, I believe that's, that's all we'll need. Okay. So let's go ahead and choose uh, the road section flat. And we want to bump it up against here. And I think we want the arrow to be going to the south. Okay, and then, uh, whoops, slide that over here. And then back this way. Okay, let's lock that in place. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to come out to here. And we're going to choose the road corner piece. And we want to go into blueprint mode for this so that it snaps correctly. And then we'll freeze it, nudge it over to there, and nudge it out one that way. Okay. Good. Then we will get the the flat road piece, and we want to make sure that it is... Uh, we're going to have to push it out that way and bring it in this way. I just got to make sure it's facing the correct direction, which I think it is. Yeah, okay. So that means it's actually facing towards the east, the arrow is. We're going to put two of these down. So let's grab another one. Make sure it's facing towards the east. Now we're going to do another corner piece. And we want the corner to go that way. Push it out. And bring it back to there. Looking good. Here we're going to put in some more straight pieces. We now want to be facing uh, to the north, with the arrow to be facing toward the north. And this needs to come over to there. Let's put one more of these in. Um, yeah, we'll put one more in. And then we're going to, we're going to cap this off for now. I'll almost certainly uh, continue to run the road, you know, to the south here, but we don't have an, a need to do that at the moment. So let's go ahead and cap this. Like so, indicating that this is currently the end of the road. And usually what I'll do too is I'll I'll put down um, uh, like a little stripe pattern thing here, but I don't have that unlocked in the shop yet. In fact, we should probably do that. We have enough points, um, especially if we feed those those uh, turbo engines in that uh, 
or turbo motors that Doug got for us. Incidentally, as far as supports go, in fact, here, let's actually do that now. Um, so I'll show you how that's going to work. I'm going to set the supports after we get all the road in place. I do have a blueprint that has the support, you know, built into it, as you can see here. Uh, but I found that it's it's actually easier just to lay the road and then put the support in after the fact. And so uh, what we'll do is we'll just remove these pieces here and we'll grab the support by itself. Make sure that it's not in blueprint mode and put it in like that. Now, of course, the sand is like really high right here. So, you know, we, we won't be able to, to do anything with it, but the support, if we look at it, um, it's got that flat area. And my original intent with that is to run rails along that. So you could run a railway underneath the road. And in some places we can still do that, but that's going to be difficult. Well, no, it's going to be impossible to do that um, along the entire road because, again, we have you know we have such an undulating landscape with you know the the sand dunes and stuff that it's, it wouldn't be practical. All that to say, though, I you know I'll put all the supports in after we get the main roadway in. Very good. Let's uh, let's get back up here. Um, you know what I think I'll do to help with that is let's just um, let's put a ladder in slot number eight, so it's just quickly available to us, and we can get back up on the road as we build it. Okay, so now over here, I'm going to build a platform with a truck station um, that we'll use for our quartz setup. But we're not going to do that in this episode. We'll probably do that in the next episode. So we're going to just leave this the way that it is for, for now. Let's come back over here. And we need to remove this and this. And we also no longer need these foundations here. But what I think I will do is remove this rail and let's put a catwalk in over to uh, the factory here. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. Very good. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the flat road piece. We'll go back to blueprint mode. Make sure it's uh, facing to the south. Right? South? Yeah. And we're going to put a few of these in until we go a little ways past the end of our factory. Okay, so we're basically one and a half. So this is about the middle of the road. So we're basically one and a half sections past the end of the factory, or at least this part of, you know, this at that height. Next, we have to go ahead and put an incline in because we have to start raising up here. Now, remember, I already surveyed this and tested it. Um, so I know, I know, you know, where to place these, but I did have to, of course, test that ahead of time to make sure everything worked. So we're going to grab the incline piece here. And we want to, yeah, we can't be in blueprint mode for this one. We have to just be in normal mode. And then we can, we should be able to get it to attach there. We want to make sure that arrow is right in the center of our painted line. And that looks good. Now, when we put these angled or incline pieces down, I have to add these rails because I couldn't, for some reason, there was just barely past the border of the blueprint designer, and it wouldn't let me add those. So I have to add those after the fact. Right. Okay. So we're just doing this one incline here first. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in a corner piece. It is not at this point in time my intention to run the road any further north um, 
at this point. Um, we're, what because what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to run it to the east, and then when we get out past the edge of that mountain off in the distance, then I'm going to run another section to the north because that's where the quartz is. Um, I don't really have a, a reason to run the road, you know, into the forest. Plus, I want to preserve that forest over there, anyways, and not, you know, keep it pristine. That could all change, of course, but that's just you know the plan for right now. Let's grab the corner piece, and this one, um, if we put it in blueprint mode, does it? Yeah. Okay. So this one we're gonna have to attach from down below. All right, so what we want to do is let's make sure it's going the right direction. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, we have to attach this one down below just because of the the way these weird thingies work here. And we want to go here and I think down to there. Okay, now let's come over here and nudge it. One to the left, and I believe that is correct. Okay. And then we are going to want to put the support in here, but let's not, let's not worry about that quite yet. I'm going, I want to get the next piece started first which is the next incline piece. Um, let's see if we can do that from down here. Um, we want it to go this way. And I think we want to bring it down one there. That, I believe, is correct. Let's lock it in. Okay, so for the support here, I think we're just going to stick it right in there. Uh, that's the center there, yeah. Oh, nope. Try that again. This is the center. Yeah. Okay. Let's actually freeze that and double check it before I lock it in this time. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And then what we do here is we just grab this guy and uh, put it in zoop mode. And then... To, uh, oh, no. Sorry. This one has to be in vertical mode because technically it's foundation. And then just run that down there. Okay, that looks pretty good. We have a little bit of texture flickering going on, but not much I can do about that. Super. Let's get back up there. Okay, we got to remove... Uh, okay, hold on a sec. We got to remove... This. Right. Okay, so that's... Those are both catwalks. So I think what we do here is we just put in a... Uh, let's put in the T-junction. Yeah, like that. That looks good. Now, if you guys didn't already know this, if you've never built... Tried to build... A roadway with blueprints... Or even without, for that matter. There's there's nothing really that works well with this this angle here. Okay, this two meter angle. Um, you can you can take the two meter foundation. Here, let me just illustrate this real quick, just so you see what I'm talking about. So you know, one thing I could do is I could take this two meter foundation, and freeze it, and then uh, you know merge it in to the roadway. And then I could put, you know, a rail here. 
Uh, if I could get it to... Oh, no, you know what I need? Uh, can I get it to attach to that? I think what you actually have to do is you have to have the, keep this rail in place first. Yeah, that's right. And then... So I could do this, right? And that gives us a nice even little walkway here. But the problem is you can't change the texture of it. Um, and so it works, but I, I, I just don't like... I don't like it because it's the same texture as the road. It doesn't have like the, you know, the catwalk grip metal texture. And if you try to do that, then obviously what's going to happen is then, then you have this problem. See? So that's why I decided, you know, and I've seen other, other people build roads too, you know, on blueprints and there's just really no getting around the whole zigzaggy look that you have going up the ramp. Some people, you know, do a, do a zigzag all the way up. I prefer to do a longer stretch and then just one stair up to the next level. Uh, but either way, it's just kind of the limitation, I suppose, of building these things and the with the angles. It'd be nice if the game had catwalks that ha you know we're at whatever this angle happens to be it's a pretty shallow angle it's called the the two meter angle if you look at uh, the foundation so it's it's this one here right so anyway i just want to point that out in case you're curious why it you know that the catwalk looks a little jank it's that's why okay so now we need to continue raising this up until we get above that sand dune all right, so as long as our arrow's in the center, we should be good there. And that is good. So from here, um, if I did all my surveying correctly, we should be able to go flat all the way out to the coast with no more obstructions with the exception of a couple of trees that we'll have to take take down a couple of those orange trees out there so now what we want to do is go back to road section flat we want to put this in blueprint mode and oh you know what though i think i'm gonna have to yeah i'm gonna have to attach this first piece from down here and then after we get the the first piece in place then we'll be we'll be golden Okay, and the other thing is, is I think, here, let me look at this. I think we want these to be facing to the west. Let's run up here real quick. Yeah, uh, yes, that's correct. We want it to be facing to the west. That, the only reason that matters, well, it matters mostly because of the street lights. But there is another reason why it matters too, and it has to do with, you know, how the catwalks connect. Hmm. If I did turn that the other way, well, oh, I'm not going to. Because it's going to throw my street lights off for everything we've already placed. And I don't want to redo them. So we're going to go with that. So when when we're facing the blueprint to the west, when the white arrow's to the west, the street lamp is on the northwest corner. And then there's, on this side, there's one in the middle. So that way it just zigzags as we go down. We do have a little bit of a problem here. And I think the way we'll deal with that is we're just going to extend this out one more. Oh, no, we want that to be stairs. And we're still a little bit in the sand, but you know what? I don't think I'm going to worry about that. Because the further back we bring this, the... 
then it doesn't match this side. Of course, we could also do the same thing on this side, I suppose. Overlapping an object's clearance. What? Oh. I think we need to get rid of this, too. That way they're consistent on both sides. I think I'm going to let this slide. We'll just say a little bit of sand blew up over onto the walkway because, you know, desert, right? <laughs> so I'm going to let that one go. Just because I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want to get this too far off from the rest of, you know, the rest of these, because then it, then it'll be inconsistent. So we have a little bit of a compromise there. All right, let's get these in too. And I think that's good. Also, if you're wondering why I'm not using road barriers, you can't you can't run road barriers at an angle. Um, they yeah, you can't do it. So that's why I'm using rails instead of road barriers. I would much prefer to use the road barriers because it would make more sense, but just another limitation here. Now that we have this piece in place, it's really just going to be a cakewalk from here on out to get it in place. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start throwing these down. And when I run out of resources, I just have to come back and load up again. Because my depots, I don't have the capacity in my depots to hold everything we need. And so when we get out to the coast, I'll bring you guys back at that point and I'll show you what the next step is. Oh, we're already out of something. Missing concrete. Okay. All right, guys, I'm back here at the base, and I got to thinking, you know, now that we have a road, considering it took me a long time to walk back here, <laughs> I think it's time for us to make the Explorer. Um, so let's see, what are we going to need to do that? We're going to need to research crystal oscillators. Um, I believe Doug has already brought us a hundred... Oh, no, that's going to be here, a hundred thingies. Yeah, 117. All right, what else do we need besides that? We need 50 reinforced plates. Let's grab some of those. So yeah, we might as well get a vehicle. And I could make a tractor too, but the Explorer's gonna be faster than the tractor. What are we doing? Quartz. Research. Research completed. Crystal oscillator recipe unlocked. New quartz research available. Okay, we have 52 crystal oscillators, again, thanks to our buddy Doug. And we're also going to need some modular frames, which we'll pull out of here. Is this full yet? Not quite. Okay, let's do this research. Explorer unlocked. This personnel transport vehicle facilitates rapid traversal of difficult terrain and climbs like a mountain goat that has returned from extinction. <laughs> nice. Okay. I love Ada. What is this? Radio signal scanning? Okay. Yeah. That's, that's all stuff we'll do later. Uh, we should, oh, you know what? We should research the shatter rebar. Shotgun rebar. But uh, we'll worry about that once we have, you know, we're actually making the quartz. That'll give us more inventory slots. That's kind of, that is the very next thing on the list after we get this road going here. What do we need to make the Explorer? Let's go to transportation and let's load that thing up. Uh, we're going to need, we got the crystal oscillators. We got pipe. We're going to need 10 more modular frames. Um... Right, okay, 10 more modular frames over here. Look at that, we have 10. And we're going to need five motors. Those we're going to have to make. Uh, 
Uh, motors. Okay. We need two stators per motor, so we need to make ten stators. Let's do that. We'll be setting stators and motors and all that st stuff up in our steel factory. Wait a second. Has Doug brought me any motors? He has not. Well, he's brought me turbo motors, which are far superior to motor motors. Doug, what are you doing over here, buddy? Hey, look at that. All right. Thanks, Doug. Let's stick the quartz stuff back in here for now. Um, oh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to... I'm trying to remember if biofuel or coal is lasts longer in the Explorer. I don't remember. So, you know what? Let's grab some and and we'll we'll do a test. I, I did that in update 8. I ran a test, but I don't remember the results of those particular ones. Um, I know that I think turbo fuel lasts the longest in a vehicle, but liquid biofuel is the best for the jetpack. Again, that does not include the new fuels. That's just the fuels that they had, you know, uh, in early access. Okay, anyway, let's see. Back to this. We need to make uh, 10 stators to make 5 motors. There's our 10 stators. Let's make 5 motors. And good. We have everything we need now to make our um, explore. So let's head on. Oh, wait, I need to get stuff replenish my inventory for the road building too that uh either that little pad over there or maybe down underneath the factory i am planning on building a, a little parking garage too for for vehicles okay so let's set this down oops Uh, we're just gonna put I'm just gonna put coal in there for the moment and look at that oh wow they they changed the way this sounds this is cool man I want to get uh, get a little more road down first before we we do the distance test yeah they definitely changed the sound on that that is cool um if we just pick it up, we can carry it with us and then set it down as needed. Let's get back to laying down our roadways here. Whilst we're here, Let's go ahead and blow this thing up and get the slug out of it. All right, so um, this tree here is going to have to go. So while we're on the ground, let's go ahead and take care of it now. Uh, let's see, we're going to need our chainsaw. And let's make sure the chainsaw is in single mode. We don't need to cut down anything else besides that. Might as well pick up some of this biomass on the ground, though, while we're here. And put it in our little biofuel factory. And I'll tell you what, if you guys are, if you ever build out in the dune desert, this oasis area has just got a massive amount of biomass on the ground, as you can see here. By the way, if you guys didn't know this, um, there's a little trick that you can do. If you, if you pick an item... Um, and then open up your inventory and then close it. Then you can just hold E down and it'll just 
pick stuff up automatically. In other words, you don't have to keep pressing the, the E key. You just hold it down. So it's very useful when you got to pick up a bunch of the stuff off the ground. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back into business here. I think we, we're probably going to have to cut one more tree, too. Um, but let's get over there first, and we'll see what the deal is. Okay, we're out of concrete already. So, let's do a little test here. We'll set our explorer down. Turn it this way. And we'll have it... We'll have the wheels right on this line here. So let's place coal in it first. And we'll just see... Oh, sorry. No, I'm not doing this right. We need to take that back out. We need to just place one piece of coal in there. Okay, let's see how far we can get on one thing of coal. Right to there. Okay. Um, let's put the ladder down and we'll just mark how far we got on coal. Okay, let's go back. That wasn't very far. I think biomass, solid biomass is actually better than coal, but I don't remember for sure, so that's why... I want to test this. Okay, once again, we'll put the wheels right on the line there. And then we'll grab one piece of uh, solid biomass. Where did it go? Right here. Or so solid biofuel, I should say. All right, let's see how far we can get with this one. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, as you can see, um, solid biofuel is, I'd say, 150% better-ish than coal. But uh, once we start making the fuels, the fuels will be even better. So, let's just cut this in half and we'll... Well, no, this only takes 100 anyways, right? Yeah. Oh, no, it takes 200. Okay, never mind. Take that back out, cut it in half, and there we go. All right, we are back, and I put some extra rods and beams in the storage here. Turn this this way, and keep on building out. Okay, so unfortunately, this tree is in the way. In fact, let's just get all the way through the tree so that way we know which ones have to go. That one we can... Ah, uh, well, I guess technically we should probably take that one out too. Okay, let's go get our explorer down here. Bean, what are you doing, bud? Hey, will he bounce us if we run over him? Let's see what happens. <laughs> okay, that's not quite what I was expecting. All right, so... This tree is going to have to go... This tree is going to have to go... This tree is going to have to go. I think that one's okay. I'm going to take this one out too, just because it is protruding out our sidewalk. Okay, that should take care of all the tree clearance. Everything else looks good. Incidentally, I'll run the, the cables for these later. Um, 
I don't. Uh, we might we might need to increase our uh, our power situation before I hook all these lights up because they will add up, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll worry about that later. Okay, so um, I think we're gonna back up a section and start going down. at this point because we want to go down out over the sea and then we're going to put a T section in and run a section of road north and a section of road south. Unfortunately though, it's not quite as simple to connect to the incline pieces when they're going down. Uh, when they're going up, it's a piece of cake. Going down, it's a little trickier, but it is doable. So what we have to do is we have to grab you and put you into zoop mode. And then I, uh, or sorry, not zoop mode, vertical mode. And I think we need to go down five, two, three, four, five. Okay. Then we're going to put this back into zoop mode and we're going to go out three. Um, now I can also attach the incline, you know, from down here, like this, that's, that's fine for here. But you know, once we get out over into open air, we're not going to be able to do it that way. So we need to have a way to do it from up above as well. Can I get up there? Nope, not quite. Okay. So let's, uh. Ladder back up right here is good enough. Yep, I think that's exactly where we want it. So let's freeze that, push it out, and pull it over to here. So, yeah, so once we get out over the open air, I'm just going to have to really caref be careful to not kill myself um and so we could what we could do is just temporarily put a couple of those there so i can kind of get underneath and then we want one meter foundation in vertical mode and we want to go down five one two three four five and then here we just um, go out to two because we're already out one. Pick those back up. And then we'll have to temporarily jump down here and pick up the, the previous set before we proceed. Um, right there. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, so now I want to jump down here and just take a look and see uh, what our clearance situation is. Yeah, that's, that was just about right. Okay, so now let's pick these up. And what we'll do is we'll put a support in here. And I'll go back along and put supports in at regular intervals, uh, you know, uh, on my way back. But I'll do that off camera. Okay, let's grab a support. Stick it there. And make sure it's lined up correctly. It looks like it is. We won't need to put a support there because it's being supported by the terrain. Yeah, that's touching, so that's fine there. What I might do here... Just for, just for the hell of it, is maybe right here. Let's grab a four meter foundation. Put that in uh, vertical, bring that down, and then over.
just so it also has a support right on the edge of the cliff here. Okay, um, what I might, I don't like this hanging out, but I don't really want to run it all the way down to the ground either. So I think what we'll do here is we'll grab an inverted four meter ramp and go like that. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Just, just me being picky. Can we make that jump? Yes, yes we can. All right, now we are out over the open air, so we're going to have to be really careful. Of course, if I fall, I do have my parachute, but still, you know, I don't like to fall. And, um, right. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we have to, we have to keep going out a ways because we need to we need to be able to clear the edge of this cliff for the road that's going to be running south. Um, and then <clears throat> same thing here, but we're gonna we're gonna run over the top of that rock outcropping on on this side, which is actually going to work in our favor because that's pretty close to the same level that we're, we want to be when we get all the way over to the end where the waterfall is because that's where we're going to build our steel factory. All right, so let's go ahead and... Oh, you know what we might be able to do? Is... Uh, just extend those out a little bit. Just so we can get to here. All right, and then we need one meter foundations in vertical mode. And we'll go down five. And then we'll go down out to two. And we, we should, theoretically, we should be able to pick those up right now, I think. It, it all depends upon where I need to aim my cursor, right? So that needs to go out to here. So that means my cursor is actually aiming at that block right there. So we don't even need this one to do this. As long as we're aiming at that one, and then we can just freeze it and nudge it back, and we're good. It's just less, you know, less stuff that we have to pick up after the fact. And then, of course, these will have to be picked up. Uh... Did I... What the hell did I just do? I think I picked up one too many, didn't I? Then we can just come down here and grab that. Okay, yeah, that makes that easy. All right, so let's do this again. One, two, three. Grab a one meter. Put it in vertical. Two, three, four, five. And then... Out two. All of these can be picked back up. Oh, I didn't set it. Oh, for Pete's sake. Okay, let's try that again. Just trying to do this as efficiently as possible, but we're kind of figuring that out as we go here. Point that to there, freeze it, pull it back, make sure everything's lined up, and we are golden. Get rid of that. Okay, so let's see, where are we? We're gonna need to go at at least one more incline, maybe two more. Freeze it, suck it back. That's easy. That's lemon squeezy, man. All right, now let's take a look-see. Where are we at? I think we're probably good here. Hmm. Yeah, uh, well, boy, that's really close. Let's put this here for a minute so I can stand right on the, on the seam. Point right to the south. 
it seems to me from looking at this that if we if we ran it here we would have a problem with that cliff i don't know if i can ping that far out but that cliff uh, where my cursor is that we'd we'd clip into it and then if we look on this side and make sure we're facing directly north yeah we probably would clip well that one if we we might be okay on on that one but thing is is we have another cliff that's even further out there. So I think we need to go down. I think we need to go down one more incline. Okay, build that catwalk out a little bit. Grab the T section, turn it the other way. All right, now let's look at this. Yeah, now now it's very obvious that we will clear the cliff that way and Boy, you know, coming out this way, we might even... Looks like we'll even clear that rock outcrop right there. Which is fine. Because then we could actually go down further. I'd, I'd like to... Um, I'm going to have to think about that. Yeah, I'll have to think about how I want to do that one. On this side, though, I want to go all the way down to the surface of the water. Just because I think it would look cool. Run the road along the water with the big old cliff you know, to the, uh, to the west and the ocean on the left. That'll look cool. By the way, the water looks so nice. I know, I, I know I've already said that, but it just looks so nice in update 1.0 compared to, you know, early access. All right, guys. Well, this is all the further I'm going to take the road for now on this end. Um, we have, we don't really have an immediate need to run it this way at all but that is going to be the plan eventually but we do need we do have a need to run it this way because that area right there where you see those rocks it's too far for me to ping but uh, that's th that area out to that little rock island there over the edge of the waterfall that's where the steel factory is going to go and it's going to it's going to be amazing for the time being though um we're going to just put barriers here. Because um, the, the next highest priority for us is to get our quartz going. So I want to focus on that um, and we'll worry about extending this road later. Let's put those pieces in place. Okay, so let's go a little further. Right about here-ish. We want to run a, a north section of the road out that way. Um, we could potentially aim for going through that, that little hoopty, hoopty hoop thingy. I don't know how wide that is, though. We'll have to, we'd have to go investigate. But we need to get past the edge of the mountain, which is right where my cursor is. And if I'm looking directly north, that's about where the edge of that mountain is. If we go a little further to, like, the edge of the loop and then look here... Um, right, okay, so we could start the T this way. But I think what I want to actually do is let's let's pick this up. 
Oh, I got too much stuff in there, huh? All right. Uh, I want to... Let's put a storage box right here. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just run a test foundation out there first. And I'm actually going to save my game too. So that way I can just reload it once I know where to go without having to take everything back down. Okay, so this is the edge right here. Let's remove you. And you. And we want to grab this foundation here. And actually bring you into there, because that's the the grid. That's the grid, global grid connection there. Okay, that costs the asphalt one costs seven concrete. Does that's the same cost as the normal one? I don't I don't know. Yes, it is. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to zoop straight out this way. Oh. No, no, no. I, I'm way too far over this way. We need to go another section over. This is the... The furthest east that we... That, that we can go. So we can go three more foundations to the west, but not to the east. And I just want to see, you know, how that's going to work out on this other end. We do have um, a node there, but it looks like we'll probably be high enough over it. We should probably confirm that, though. Uh, surface is... What? Oh, okay. Okay. So let's put that down, and... Yeah, we definitely have lots of clearance, so we don't have to worry about, about that. All right, so we confirmed that. We're good to go. All right, we are quite a bit higher than I thought we were going to be for this loop. Um, but remember, this is the furthest east. So if I decide to let this slide, it's really only going to be blocking the catwalk. Um, I don't, I'm not saying I'm going to do that, but let's just keep going and see, you know, what, what the situation is over here, because we may, we also may be, you know, too far to the, to the west over here too. Let's just see how it lines up with the cliff. All right. So there's the two quartz nodes. And the thing is, is. I would probably bring the road down to the ground at this point anyways. Even though we're going to have, you know, we're going to have a miner and, and a truck station. Those could stay up high, but, you know, we need to, at some point, we need to be able to get off the road. And if we're going to do that, we would have to make sure that one, two, three... Okay, we have enough clearance at this level, but as we start to incline down, we're going to have potentially have some challenges with this cliff here. So the question then is... There's no way we're going to be able to go through that loop. It's 
not even any nowhere near as wide as I thought it was going to be. Um, okay, what about holding it out another section this way instead? That might be the better plan here. Let's try something, though. Let's start... Well, I'm not going to be able to really determine that either without knowing how many... I, I wanted to start the incline here to see, but we have to make sure we're starting it at in increments of four. And without going back and counting all of these, I, I don't really know where that is. Just out of curiosity, though, if we did get the incline, which is the two meter ramp, and zooped it from here, yeah, we'd, we'd, we would have to start that process way sooner because this is going to just go right off over the edge of the cliff there. And my concern with starting it way sooner is that, you know, keeping in mind that at present, this is the furthest east we got to go four more that way we're going to probably run into that cliff so what that tells me is that we we need to run this road we, we need to go over one more road section i mean if we want it to be a straight shot which you know preferably we do right um the next question then there though is is that dune out there going to cause us some trouble Um, okay, if, if we go the next section over, then that means this would be the western edge of the next section. This would not be protruding into the catwalk as badly as it was over here. Um... But are we going to have problems with this arch now? If we go three that way. No, I think I think we're good. I don't think we have to worry about that arch right there. And if we started the... Ooh, we don't want to cover that water geyser either. Because we very likely may be using that in the future. So that's... I'm going to have to factor that into all of this as well. But if we started the incline here... Once we got to here-ish, um, you know, these nodes here. Well, actually, those nodes, those would just have extractors on them, which aren't very tall. So we, we could get away with that. We just couldn't, we, we can't block this because this is going to have the big, you know, the big fracker on it when the time comes. But what we could do is... Put in a corner section and then face that way and just kind of zigzag it around because we have to work around this thing. That's, there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, we could go, you know, maybe to here at the most, but, you know, that's already too far. We're going to have to come back here, flatten it out, go that way and zigzag it down and then ramp it down to a probably somewhere right about there ish okay i think that's a workable plan so what i'm going to do is i'm, I'm going to start this road 
based upon, you know, that that being the west end of it. In other words, we're going to move to the one section back to the east from where we started. And we should be flying all the way out to here. And then I'll just kind of have to determine at what point I want to start ramping down. I mean, we could even start this ramping down process further back to here. But I'll get that all figured out. And then what we're going to do in the next episode is I'll get the road taken care of. And then we're going to, we'll start the next episode and we'll build a truck station over here. Put the miners in a truck station. I'm not going to put, um, I'm not going to put my smelter sheds in over here because there's, we're not smelting anything, right? We're going to send the quartz raw back to the base. We're going to process it there. Um, so yeah, we'll set up the truck station here and the miners and then set it up on the other end along with the platform that I'm planning and do all of that. And hopefully by the end of the next episode, we'll have quartz production underway. That is the plan. All right, I'm going to reload my game and start this process over. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.